Meanwhile, Mike found that the Baltimore school teachers were ready to do their full share in this fight. He told them how they could pass the word on to the children, the word that might keep the youngsters alive. Health education was another sector of the grand battle. Every known method of spreading the word was used. Ignorance must not serve as a weapon for the enemy. And the toxoid came to those who could not come to it. Mike knew that his tiring rounds were less tiring than the visits he or some other physician would have to make if diphtheria got there first. But the strain on all the medical personnel was enormous. The nurses usually spent their evenings reporting on the work of crowded days. The call for doctors seemed unceasing as the outbreak reached its peak. The neighborhood practitioners and the doctors who had volunteered to help them never seemed to catch up on the visits and rounds. There was always one more case to see. The usual early winter illnesses, flu and pneumonia, began to compete for their attention as diphtheria went on striking down the youngsters of all classes. In some cases, the toxoid shots had been given too late. A spectator today might be a patient tomorrow. A worried mother one day might become a frantic mother the next. And while the outbreak was fought, the search went on for the main source of infection. Mike joined the city officials who visited the district schools. They checked the supposedly healthy youngsters, for often disease carriers are themselves immune. The doctors found two little girls who had suspicious nasal infections. Bacterial cultures made from these might yield an answer. They did. An answer that was discussed promptly at a staff meeting. The two youngsters had been giving diphtheria to their schoolmates. Now quarantined and under treatment, they would no longer serve as innocent agents of death. The diphtheria outbreak could be expected to subside. This battle had been won. But disease cannot be shut off like a water tap. Mike went on helping out in the contagious wards that were still jammed. Now his internship was paying dividends. He checked case histories and worried about the beats of a hundred little fighting hearts as the children blossomed back to normalcy after a successful fight against death. They looked well, but diphtheria has a treacherous way of leaving hidden trouble. The youngsters still needed care and rest to keep them well. Mike forgot how to be tired. Often the sun came up before a night's work was over. Yes, here he was coming home from work at nine o'clock in the morning. He was more weary and worn out than a man should ever be. But at last he had caught up. These were almost his kids now. He had helped save their lives. He could let them go off to school knowing they were safe from diphtheria. Although he hadn't seen them for weeks, he'd been a good doctor to them. The road through anatomy, bacteriology, pathology, pediatrics, biostatistics, public health, had taken him forward. Mike, at last, had found his place. Yes, this was it. This was medicine for him. Mike's mind is on the youngsters of the community where he'll go to work next year. Brazil, China maybe, Alabama. Michael Kenneth Marshall, BS, MD, MPH, will be well prepared for the job.